you and your friend show up a little late to a birthday party, and by the time you get there, there's only a half a pizza left. Uh, the three of you split it evenly and each eat a third of the half of pizza. How much pizza did each of you eat? Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're gonna to talk about multiplying fractions. Okay, so let's talk about that pizza. Uh, you show up a little late, and unfortunately there's only a half a pizza left, which is a pretty big bummer. Uh, let's show what that looks like visually. Well, let's draw a picture of a pizza. So here's the whole pizza. By the time you get there, there's only half left, okay? so. Here's the half of a pizza that's left that you and two other friends have to split. So each of you have a third of that half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that, I'm going to try to make it as even as possible. So each of you have a third of that. So the question is, well, how much pizza did you actually eat? And it's relative to the whole pizza. So this is, maybe I'll do it in, I'll do it in blue. Each of you had a third, one third of a one half of the pizza. So how much total is that? Well, you see, these are split into thirds here uh, of the half. We need to make the same size pieces here. So I'm going to do the same thing and split that like that. Now that they're all the same size pieces, we can actually figure out what one third of one half a pizza is. Okay. That's the question. Well, what is one third of one half? Well, this is equal to one out of six. There's one, two, three, four, five, six total pieces of that size in the whole pizza. You only ate, you and your friends each only ate one of them. So the answer is one six. Now let's look at how could we actually get there uh, with just the math without actually drawing a picture. If you remember of in word problems, that means multiplication. So I can rewrite this as one third times one half. And we know it's got to be 1 6 and if I look well how would I get 1 6 uh, from this problem well 1 times 1 is 1 and 3 times 2 is 6 so if you notice all we had to do was multiply straight across numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator let's look at another example okay so example one we're going to start off pretty simple uh, 1 fifth times 1 third if you remember from that uh, pizza problem, we said to multiply fractions, you don't need common denominators. That's adding and subtracting. We don't care what the denominators are. Uh, we just multiply straight across. So 1 times 1 is 1, and 5 times 3 is 15. Now, when you're working with fractions, we always want our answers in simplest form. Uh, in this case, 1 15th is in simplest form. So I'm done. Let's look at another example. All right, here's example number two, eight ninths times three fourths. So like we said before, you can just multiply straight across. So if I do that, eight times three is 24. Nine times four is 36. 24 over 36. But hold on a second. I mentioned that when you deal with fractions, you always want your answer in simplest form. This is not in simplest form. And simplest form means that there aren't any other common factors besides one uh, with a numerator and denominator. 24 and 36 do have other common factors uh, between them between, besides one. Uh, if you look, obviously they're both even numbers, so two is a common factor. Uh, six is also a common factor. Um, 
12 is also a common factor. So there's quite a bit of common factors. So what we need to do is simplify this. And to do it quickly, uh, all you need to do is basically if you can figure out what the greatest common factor is, then you can simplify it in one step. If you can't figure out what that is, then you can all you can do any common factor you want. You just it just might take you a few more steps. So 12 is the greatest common factor of 24 and 36. So if I divide the numerator and denominator by 12, I get two thirds. 24 divided by 12 is 2. 36 divided by 12 is 3. And if you look, the reason I can do that is because all I did was essentially divide this fraction by 1. I didn't change the value of it. I just changed what it looked like. 24 over 36 is equivalent to 2 thirds. The only difference is this has a lot more pieces, but they're skinnier. Like, if you think of a pizza again. There's 36 pieces in this, in this pizza, uh, but they're really small. So this is 24 out of that 36. Here, there's only three pieces in the pizza, but they're much bigger. Uh, they're equivalent. The amount of it is still the same. So dividing by 1 doesn't change, right? Anything divided by 1, it's still the same. Just like anything multiplied by 1 is still the same. So these are equivalent. Now, this is not the best way to solve this problem. I want to show you how to do this problem much better uh, and much easier. So let's solve this problem again uh, using a different method. Instead of simplifying at the end, I'm going to show you how you can simplify at the beginning. Um, now first, I'm going to show you something and you don't really need to write it down. Just follow along and see if you can understand what I'm doing. So 8 times 3, I can write this as 8 times 3 over 9 times 4. Right? We're multiplying. That's essentially what we do, right? Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So that's okay. That step's fine. I can also, since we're multiplying, I can change the order. Commutative property says I can change the order when I'm multiplying. So that can become uh, 3 times 8 over 9 times 4. That's okay. Now, I can also break some of these uh, integers apart into uh, a product of their factors. So instead of 3 times 8, I can write it as 3 times, uh, let's do 2, 3 times 2 times 4. Well, 3 times 8 is 24. 3 times 2 is 6 times 4 is 24. It's the same. I just broke that 8 into 2 times 4. So I'm all right there. Same thing here with the 9. I'm going to break it up. 3 times 3 uh, times 4. Okay. Then I'm running out a little bit out of room, so I'm going to go over here. Uh, I can now break them apart into fractions again, kind of basically what it was here, going the opposite direction. So now I'm going to make it 3 over 3, right? That by itself times 2 over 3 times 4 over 4. I can do that because essentially it's the same thing, right? 3 times 2 times 4 here, 3 times 3 times 4 here. Okay. Um, now, hopefully you notice something. Well, what is 3 times 3? I'm sorry, not 3 times 3, 3 over 3 or 3 thirds. Well, that's just 1 times 2 thirds times 4 over 4 is the same as 1. 4 fourths is 1. Well, 1 times 2 thirds is 2 thirds. 2 thirds times 1 is 2 thirds, which is what we got before. All we did was we tried to break uh, these numbers apart into factors so that we could find common factors. So we know that 8 and 4 had a common factor of 4 here, right? Which let us kind of cancel it out. It became 1. Uh, we also found that 3 and 9 had a common factor of 3. So same thing. We can basically kind of cancel that out, and that becomes 1. And then what we're left with is just 2 thirds. 
you will definitely not need to show all of this. Okay, let's show you one more one more way of how to do essentially this much quicker and simpler. But it's important to know where that comes from. Okay, so let's try it one more time. All right, let's try this problem one more time. Um, and now we're going to use the rule that is so, so, so important, and that is to always try to simplify before you multiply. Always try to do that first. It's going to make your life a whole lot easier. So I'm looking for common factors between any numerators and any denominators. We don't go common factors in the numerators by themselves or, uh, sorry, numerators by themselves or denominators. It's got to be a numerator with a denominator so that you set up that situation where it becomes 1. So like we said before, 8 and 4 have a common factor of 4. So 4, sorry, 8 divided by 4 becomes 2. So I cross out the 8 and write 2. 4 divided by 4 becomes 1. 9 and 3 also have common factors. It's 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. Now that I've simplified it, before I multiply, it's very easy. 2 times 1 is 2. And 3 times 1 is 3. And there's my answer. It's already in simplest form because I simplified here first. If you do all your simplifications here, your answer will automatically already be in simplest form. Okay. Uh, here are some problems to try on your own. All right, here's our last example. Example three, one half times two and three fourths. Now, two and three fourths is a mixed number. Uh, so what you want to do first is anytime you're multiplying fractions with mixed numbers or mixed numbers with mixed numbers, change it to an improper fraction. Uh, and the reason is you could leave it like this, but it's going to be much more complicated. You have to use the distributive property, and it's kind of a pain. So just trust me, change it to an improper fraction first. So 1 half times 2 and 3 fourths. If you remember how to convert it to an improper fraction, I just do numerator times the whole number. So 4 times 2 is 8, plus the numerator is 11. Denominator stays the same. That becomes 11 fourths. Okay. Now I'm ready to go. Uh, and like we said earlier, always try to simplify first. So you're looking, are there any common factors between a numerator and denominator that I can simplify? And here there isn't. Don't do 2 and 4. Remember, those are both denominators. You can't simplify uh, anything that's both denominators or both numerators. It has to be numerator and denominator. So there isn't anything to simplify, so I just multiply straight across. 1 times 11 is 11. And 2 times 4 is 8. Now, I can leave it as, a, as an improper fraction. That's in simplest form. Or I can change it back to a mixed number. 8 goes into 11 once. There would be 3 left over. 3 eighths left over. Okay. So those are both uh, acceptable answers unless your teacher says they want something specific. Okay. Here's some to try on your own. As always, thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe.